Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Baden-Württemberg in Germany. And yes, that is how we pronounce it in English. I know that is not how you pronounce it in German. I'm pretty sure it's Baden-Württemberg. But my policy on this channel is that I pronounce everything in American English because that is the language I speak. And I always give the example that we don't say Paris, we say Paris, right? Um, it just keeps things more streamlined and less complicated. So I'm going to pronounce things in the American English way, but there are some places here that aren't, or they don't have an English equivalent. Um, the capital city here, in English we say Stuttgart, Stuttgart, which I'm pretty sure in German it's Stuttgart, I think, um, but in English we say Stuttgart, so that's what I'm gonna say, but let me think, I think, um, it's a good town that we don't have an English equivalent of her, Karlsruhe, I mean, we don't have an English word for that, so it's Karlsruhe. It'll, it'll, it's like that. <laughs> Let's get into the geography here, because it's quite interesting. There's quite some interesting things to point out. Down here in the south, oh my camera creeped up a bit. Let's bring that back to a little bit. What about this? There we go. <laughs> you can see Lake Constance here, or as they say in German, Bodensee. Bodensee. Lake Constance there on the border with Switzerland. And on the border here with France, we have the Rhine River. But probably the most notable river in the state is the Neckar River, which you can see right here flowing through Stuttgart, this one, the Neckar River. There's also the Danube River, you can see, flowing through here in baden württemberg We also have another famous place, the Swabian Alps, as we say in English, it looks like here in German, it's uh, Schwabisch Alp, maybe? The Swabian Alps, or the Swabian Juras, which my favorite fact is that Jura is spelled J-U-R-A, Jura, uh, which is where the word Jurassic comes from, from archaeologists digging layers in the Jura Mountains finding fossils and things, which there's some kind of cool dinosaur museums in Stuttgart. And I think Koswell has one too. Let's go check those out on the Google Earth later, because uh, dinosaur museum stuff is really cool, I think. But by far the most famous feature of Baden-Württemberg would be the Black Forest, which you can see here in German, the Schwarzfeld. You can see here the Schwarzfeld National Park. The Black Forest, so named because these trees are very, very dark green and they're clustered, clustered together in a way that from a distance they look black. The Black Forest, and yes, that is where Black Forest cake comes from. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> um, I guess one other site to point out, which will transition us into UNESCO sites actually, is Baden Baden. Sorry, people are still setting off fireworks outside. I think they might be done. Oh my goodness, it's July 7th now and still fireworks are happening in it. But Baden Baden, which you can see right here. Baden Baden. Very famous spa town, which let's get into UNESCO sites starting with that because the spa towns of Europe, which we discussed before. Um, when we were talking about, who was it? <laughs> um, let me get this in frame. Vichy is what we were talking about before. Um, let's read, I guess if you haven't seen uh, my Over Everyone Else video, we'll um, read this again. Great Spawn Towns of Europe. This transnational serial property comprises 11 spa towns, fireworks, sorry, located in seven European countries. And we're going to be, of course, talking about Baden-Baden tonight. There are others in Germany. 
Um, all of these towns developed around natural mineral water springs. They bear witness to the international European spa culture that developed from the early 18th century to the 1930s, leading to the emergence of grand international resorts that impacted urban typology around assemblies of spa buildings such as baths, kurhaus, and kursal. In different languages, there are buildings and rooms dedicated to therapy. Pump rooms, drinking halls, colonnades, and galleries designed to harness the natural mineral water resources and to allow their practical use for bathing and drinking. Related facilities include gardens, assembly rooms, casinos, which is true in Parampanan, theaters as well, hotels and villas, as well as spa-specific support infrastructure. These ensembles are all integrated into an overall urban context that includes a carefully managed recreational and therapeutic environment in a picturesque landscape. Together, these sites embody the significant interchange of human values and developments in medicine, science, and balneology. Let's see if we can find any bottom bottom pictures here in the gallery. Thankfully, they're all labeled here. We can see back. There we go. Here's the Kuh House in bottom bottom. Here's the Trinkhalle. Or the, the drinks hall, right? They're talking about drinks. We'll look at them on Google Earth. I found some really really beautiful spas in bottom bottom, but we'll see them on Google Earth. Next we're going to talk about probably my favorite site, are the caves and the Ice Age art in the Swabian Jura. Modern humans first arrived in Europe 43,000 years ago during the last Ice Age. One of the areas where they took up residence was the Swabian Jura in southern Germany. Excavated from the 1860s, six caves have revealed items dating from 43,000 to 33,000 years ago. Among them are carved figurines of animals, including cave lions, mammoths, horses, and bovids, musical instruments, and items of personal adornment. Other figurines depict creatures that are half animal, half human, and there is one statuette of a woman with a very famous Venus figure. These archaeological sites feature some of the oldest figurative art worldwide and help shed light on the origins of human artistic development. Let's take a look here at these scary caves. They're kind of eerie, but it's where our ancestors found solace and shelter and um, obviously felt comfortable enough to create some cool art in there. Very neat. Um, then, moving a bit further in history, we have the frontiers of the Roman Empire, which you can see on the map here includes Hadrian's Wall, um, what's the other one? The Antonine Wall, and other uh, border sites here, um, which we can find a lot of in Baden-Württemberg. The Roman Lemus represents the borderline of the Roman Empire at its greatest extent from the 2nd century CE. It stretched over 5,000 kilometers from the Atlantic coast of northern Britain through Europe to the Black Sea, and from there to the Red Sea and across North Africa to the Atlantic coast. The remains of the Lemus today consist of vestiges of built, built walls, ditches, forts, fortresses, watchtowers, and civilian settlements. Certain elements of the line have been excavated, some reconstructed, and a few destroyed. The two sections of the Lemus in Germany cover a length of 550 kilometers from the northwest of the country to the Danube in the southeast. And then it talks about Hadrian's Wall and the other ones in the UK. And there's no pictures there. I try to dig up some of these sites on Google Earth, and I think I found some, but one, they were in German, so I'm not positive, and then two, they didn't even have any pictures associated with the little tags I found, so that's a bust. There's two monastery complexes that are UNESCO sites here. First, we have the Malbron Monastery Complex. Founded in 1147, the Cistercian Malbron Monastery is considered the most complete and best-preserved medieval monastic complex north of the Alps. 
Surrounded by fortified walls, the main buildings were constructed between the 12th and 16th centuries. The monastery's church, mainly in transitional Gothic style, had a major influence in the spread of Gothic architecture over much of northern and central Europe. The water management system at Melbourne, with its elaborate network of drains, irrigation canals, and reservoirs, is of exceptional interest. It is a very pretty site and has some beautiful facades, classic of southern Germany. Let's find some good pictures. There's a good one here. Right here. It's so, so pretty. But yeah, very interesting complex. Famous fountain there. And big, beautiful hallways there. And beautiful ceilings and paintings on the walls, of course. I think it's a school now, this is reading about. It's pretty cool. Then we have another one, the monastic island of Reichenau. The island of Reichenau on Lake Constance preserves the traces of the Benedictine monastery, founded in 724 which exercised remarkable spiritual, intellectual, and artistic influence. The churches of St. Mary and Marcus, St. Peter and St. Paul, and St. George, mainly built between the 9th and 11th centuries, provide a panorama of early medieval monastic architecture in Central Europe. Their wall paintings bear witness to impressive artistic activity. And sadly, there's no picture. Maybe this one does have pictures. Maybe... Was, oh darn. I think it's this next site. There's no pictures. There's pictures of this one, fortunately, because it has some beautiful wall art, like it was saying. And very, like, you know, it's a monastery, so it's a little more plain, but like, plain, you know. This is the Church of St. Mary and Mark. It says, gorgeous stained glass there at the altar. So pretty. But still, you know, a monastery has to be, you know, simple and neat and efficient, but it's still so lovely, isn't it? Neat little complex here. This one doesn't have any pictures. The prehistoric pile dwellings around the Alps. It says this serial property of 111 small individual sites encompasses the remains of prehistoric pile dwelling or stilt house settlements in and around the Alps built from around 5,000 to 500 BCE on the edges of lakes, rivers, or wetlands. In our case, it's on the shores of Lake Constance. Excavations only conducted in some of the sites have yielded evidence that provides insight into life in prehistoric times during the Neolithic and Bronze Age in Alpine Europe, and the way communities interacted with their environment. 56 of the sites are located in Switzerland. The settlements are a unique group of exceptionally well-preserved and culturally rich archaeological sites, which constitute one of the most important sources for the study of early agrarian societies in the region. Now, this is the only picture here. Make it bigger. If we can. Nope. Okay, here we go. But yeah. You wouldn't think prehistoric peoples were building stilt houses like this that are still around today, right? There is that element of very ancient, I guess, architecture and all of these reeds and things making up the roof and the walls here, all the timber. But very clever. I wonder if these are remains of houses that were lost here. It's just the stilts are left. Or one right here. Very, very neat, isn't it? There is one other UNESCO site, um, which is the architecture of Le Corbusier, which has sites all over the world. Um, but the UNESCO page really only talks about one of them. And I forget which one it is, but it's not in Germany. Um, he built a house in Stuttgart here. That's part of the site, so we're going to skip that one. Let's get into the history here. We've got a long history to talk about. So, one of my favorite facts, besides the Jurassic thing, is about Homo heidelbergensis, which you can see here, the town of Heidelberg. And that is because 
a ancient human was discovered here, well, parts of it, I think just the jaw, was found outside Heidelberg in 1907. Homo heidelbergensis. Um, probably died in this region between 600,000 and 200,000 years ago. But there's plenty of evidence of ancient humans who are now long extinct, leading into our ancient ancestors of Homo sapiens living all throughout the state here. And uh, very famously, like the UNESCO site said, the Romans came up and started to build defensive walls as they went. And as they pushed farther and farther north, they would knock down, or they called them the lemus, right? And knock them down, move farther north, and then rebuild to defend their area, and then go farther and farther north. They got pretty far up here. Um, they entered in 90 CE, and by the 3rd century, they were chased out by the Alamanni, the ancient peoples of Germany, which my fellow Francophones out there will know the word for Germany is Alemania, the land of the Alemanni. Uh, the Romans did build baths in Baden Baden, however, that would be found much, 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 much later. They already figured out that it's a great spot to have way back then. By the 7th century, the area was controlled by the Frankish Merovingian dynasty. That's Charlemagne and all of his sons, things like that. And in 950, Swabia was formed. And I actually have some maps here to show you. That I printed out. Actually, I made my sister print them out. But here is Swabia. As you can see Lake Constance over here. So Swabia, as you can see, if I could line this up perfectly, would have been around here. And you might have heard of the Swabian League, which was a military alliance that was formed in 1488 between all the powers here. That out the way. Um, there we go. <laughs> Just threw it on the floor. <laughs> Stuttgart was founded in 1220. By 1251, it was controlled by the Count of Württemberg. Württemberg, right. Which is when the Kingdom of Württemberg started to slowly, slowly form. That wouldn't be formally created until 1805 and would stick around until 1918, actually. I actually printed out more maps. I may as well show them to you now. So here is the Kingdom of Württemberg. You can see in the eastern half, and then we have the Grand Duchy of Baden on the western half. So you can see the rivers here making the natural lines of the states. So there's Baden, and there's Württemberg. You can almost put them together like a little puzzle piece, except there's this bit in the middle, right? That was Hohenzollern. Right there. So the many parts on this one has needed really divided it up. So you can see Baden, Württemberg, Hohenzollern. The different historical regions of the state and how we get the name. This region, this I should say, this, this area, the whole state area was pretty devastated by the Thirty Years' War, the 1630s. A religious conflict between Catholics and Lutherans, and if you boil it down, it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, but this area was quite ravaged by the Habsburgs coming in and conquering and burning down as they went. A couple of decades later, beginning in 1688, was the Nine Years' War, another religious conflict. It went on until 1697, also quite devastated the area. Not to mention there were many outbreaks of the plague during these wars that also greatly affected the population, as you can imagine. But as we get into the 18th, 19th centuries, some interesting facts about this place. 
let's start with the spas here in Baden Baden. They would begin to open in the late 18th century. And many of the rich and famous of the time, especially royalty, would come here and soak in the waters. Pretty much any famous royal from the 19th century would have come here at some point. It was nicknamed Europe's summer capital. And yeah, they built a big casino and lots and lots of beautiful luxury here. So people can soak in the healing waters and cure all kinds of things. Probably not cure, right? But helped out with various ailments people had. But we're gonna hop up here to Mannheim where there's some very interesting history. They call it the city of inventions for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bicycle was invented in Mannheim in 1817. It looked nothing like bicycles now. There weren't pedals. You had to reach down with your toes and push along, but nevertheless, the bicycle began here. But even more interestingly, in 1886, Carl Benz invented the first car as we know them today, right? Here in Mannheim. The very famous story happened with his wife, Bertha, um, in 1888. She took the world's first road trip. She drove all the way from Mannheim to Pforzheim, down here. Distance of about 120 miles, which is uh, 194 kilometers. Drove there and back. And now it's a historic road. You can drive along it and um, enjoy the first road trip around. Very interesting story there about Bertha Benz. Um, Stuttgart, we're gonna see um, the Mercedes Benz Museum and the Porsche Museum is there as well. Which again, that's how we pronounce those cars in English. Let's first talk about the World Wars because this area was very badly bombed during World War I. But that would pale in comparison to how this state affected by World War II. Kristallnacht happened from November 9th to 10th, 1938. It was a moment, I would say, of hysteria because it swept Germany overnight with outrage against the Jewish people, destruction of Jewish property, burning down synagogues, attacking Jewish people directly. And that occurred in pretty much every major city here in baden württemberg much every major city in Germany over time. And many of those synagogues that were burned down were never rebuilt. And there's some memorials that we can see in some of the cities to where synagogues once stood. And of course, in, by 1940, I should say, uh, pretty much the entire Jewish population of baden württemberg were deported to concentration camps, and very, very few survived from that time. In the tail end of the war, 1944-45, this area was very heavily bombed by the Allies. Pretty much every major city was extremely, like, firebombed to the point that most cities were almost completely wiped off the map. There are only a couple that weren't. Um, Heidelberg was one. Um, and then to begin, which is right here to begin. It was also not bombed um, and other areas were just not touched for whatever reason but pretty much like the fireworks out there just uh, pretty extremely heavily bombed especially Mannheim because it was an industrial city. The United States and the French occupied various parts of Baden-Württemberg. The United States took over Stuttgart and they pretty much never left to be honest. What's interesting here in the United States, if you ever meet someone who, say, they grew up in an army base overseas, nine times out of ten, they were in Germany. A lot of American bases here set up post-World War II and just never stopped. They just kept going. I'd say the other one out of ten would be either, like, Japan or Korea, to be honest, but almost all of them are in Germany. That's true for Stuttgart today. 1949, Baden-Württemberg joined West Germany, 
and officially became a state in 1952. And the only other historical thing that I found is actually quite sad here in Stuttgart at the uh, Stomheim prison in 1970, oh I didn't write down the year, 1977 I'm pretty sure. So some rowdy communists who were terrorists, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to say this very carefully for YouTube, uh, were imprisoned here and many other communist sympathizers and people around the world were outraged and committed some pretty terrible acts including the hijacking of Lufthansa Flight 181, which is a very not safe for YouTube topic. You can look that up yourself for a variety of reasons. Also, a man named Hans Schläger was kidnapped and I think held for ransom, who was a very anti-communist, very left-leaning dude. And they did kill him. And... Um, at one point, the prisoners in the prison uh, took their own lives. They realized that it wasn't that they were never going to be released. And they call it the German Autumn, this period, because it all kind of happened in quick succession, all of these things, among other um, attacks and threats and things like that that also aren't safe for YouTube. So, sad little chapter, but today it's obviously very peaceful, very quaint, and um, lots of cool sights to see. So we're gonna head over to Google Earth and check it out. Let's go. So here's Baden-Württemberg from above. Let's zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. We're crooked. There we go. So here you can see Germany can see Switzerland and France over there making up the border. And we are, of course, in southern Germany. You can see there. And you can even see from above the Black Forest. You can kind of see why it's called that, right? Now, there's so many things to show you. I'm trying to remember all of the things, because I've just been playing in Baden-Württemberg for like a week straight, just exploring and finding all kinds of fun things. So we're gonna start in Stuttgart here. Down here, we have like the, the main square here with the big schloss or castle. And all of the main sites around it, churches and things. Um, we do have some cool museums over here. This is the dinosaur one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh no, this is this the history. History Museum, which is just as good. I wanted to show you this too. All kinds of Roman artifacts. And interesting statues there. Statues. Where would fancy crown and scepter? Cool helmet there. A sleigh. It's like the white witch is gonna give you Turkish delight in that. Oh, that's neat. Hermes there. Or Mercury, I suppose. Some steins there. Some cool religious art. Old bell. Some photographs too. Oh, that's interesting. The stag antler there. There's lots of interesting museums in Um I'm Trying to remember where the Natural history. It's not this one, is it? Mm, I think it is. Maybe not. Oh, there's some cool photographs there. Oh no, this is the like interactive kids museum. You can see the planetarium. I'll have to show you the one in Kozlohe. That one's easier to find. Plus, I gotta show you the- oh wait, is this it? Ha ha ha. Natural Kunstmuseum. Natural History. I found it. I thought it was over here. It's way over there. Okay, dinosaur time. Dinosaur skeletons. Dinosaur models. Dinosaurs chillin'. Dinosaur- oh my 
goodness, look at these fangs. That's outrageous. And look at him on his tippy toes there. Obviously, he didn't walk like that. Mammoth baby. <laughs> a sea creature. A big shark friend. Oh, that's a big friend. Look at that big old smile. <laughs> what a crazy skeleton. Oh, some big, big friends out there. Kind of looking like giant sloths. There's some bears. Some cave bears. Triceratops. Some early man there, too. Showing off the skills there. Grinding up the bones. Some big, maybe aurochs here. At the ancient elk. What were they called? With those huge, 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 huge. There's a friend coming over to say hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that neck. Wow. <laughs> um, but what I really got to show you is the Mercedes-Benz Museum and the Porsche Museum. So these, um, these cars are developed here in Stuttgart. Mercedes-Benz and Porsche and here at the museum. They obviously don't make cars like these now. That's really cool with the doors. But we can see lots of old cars that they made. Mercedes. And lots of race cars as well. That's a cool big coach, looks like. Early prototypes. Some cool modern friends there. Bus. Didn't know they made buses. This looks like the um, car that Bertha Benz took the road trip on. Probably wasn't that, but it looked a lot like that. Oh, that's a sleek car, isn't it? Then we have the Porsche Museum. These all look so space age, don't they? They're. Oh, these fancy cars. Oh, there's a car from Cars. Wasn't it Sally? Wasn't that her name? Police car. Uh. Camaro. I know I don't know a lot about cars. Some of you have called me out on my tour of the automobile museum. And yes, I definitely don't know my cars. Was maybe Formula One trophies? Maybe? I'm guessing. That's fancy. But I do appreciate cars. It's so interesting how the shape of cars, not like race cars, because that's built for aerodynamics, you know. That's still interesting, but just everyday cars, how the shape has changed so drastically in the past hundred years, right? I just think that's super, super interesting. Let's head over to the Black Forest. I'm super backwards. There we go. I'm super sideways. The Black Forest you can see here. Let's find the National Park. Little tag. There we go. Here you can see the trees are so dark that they appear black, but they really aren't. Beautiful waterfalls and ponds and gorgeous rivers here. This would be a fantastic hiking space, wouldn't it? Oh, it's very enchanted. Almost gives that, you know, haunted fairy tale, which is appropriate because I'm sure that the Brothers Grimm were inspired by this landscape when they are writing their very eerie yet charming children's stories. Um, it's kind of the vibe here, right? It's quaint, but there's something about it. There. They brought their picnic with them. There's something like, I think this woods is haunted kind of vibes, right? Oh, pretty in the snow. That's gorgeous. Old tower there. And more snowy pictures. Gorgeous, gorgeous part of Germany here. Probably the most famous natural landscape of Germany is the Black Forest. What shall we see next? Do you guys want to see the world's tallest church? Let's go. Let's go. The world's tallest church. I, I read that fact. I went, no way. What? No way. And then, boom. <laughs> that is huge. Now, I wonder, surely there's a difference between churches and cathedrals, because I'm sure cathedrals are way bigger than this, but... Look at... it's gigantic. It's unnecessarily large, and I'm sure when it was built... See, look at that's way too big. 
when it was built, they weren't setting out to build the world's tallest church, but here we are. I guess that's the view from the top. You can see pretty far. A little construction of it there. It's way too big. But beautiful, isn't it? The world's tallest church. Unnecessarily tall, but very neat. Um, I need to show you, I'm going to type it in because I know I'm not going to find it because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere Hohenzollern Castle which there are castles all over the state here from all of the ancient families that lived here but I think this is the, oh it's not in 3D <laughs> the biggest and most famous one I'll zoom out so you can see exactly where we are because I forgot to <laughs> it's kind of just out there so there's the I'm sure you can make it in a day trip from Stuttgart. Hohenzollern Castle. So this is the main castle of the Hohenzollern family. It's all very medieval. Gorgeous chapel here. View from the top. Yeah, so I was reading about all the different castles in the state and I read multiple sources. It looks like St. George there. St. George Slane multiple sources that this is like the best like if you have to visit one castle you come to this one. Oh, creepy inside is that like a dungeon there you think yeah these look like bars the dungeon you can't have a medieval castle without a dungeon um let's look at Baden Baden let's reorient ourselves and let's go to Baden Baden. Spa town of Baden Baden. I'm gonna have to reorient myself again. So I think it's around the hillside here because there's lots of um, big like manor towns built around the mountains. And it's kind of a, a tourist like. I should have mentioned this before, how tourism became like a huge thing here in the 19th century. And there's still lots of cool museums here for tourists, like the Fabergé Museum. There's a Frida Kahlo Museum. Um, all kinds <laughs> to try to attract people here. See, there's Frida Kahlo up there. I gotta find the spas to show you. Um, maybe I'll just have to type it in. I know I typed it in before. <laughs> maybe it'll pop up in my recent searches. Yep, it sure did. So there's a bunch of, oh, it was right there. Oh, it was so close. I was looking over here. It was over here. Um, this is one of the more famous older ones here. Tony Tolik's bud. Which, um, that's exquisite. I, you would never get me out of this. I'm such a water bug. <laughs> You get me in a swimming pool, you get me in a spa, you get me in the ocean. I like never come out. I will never want to come out. But I think this one here is my favorite out of all the ones I was eyeing. When I visit someday, I'm gonna come here. Of course, the name's not popping up. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Big, gorgeous pools. Outdoor pools? Looks like a person swimming around in the fountain, so I guess you're supposed to swim in that fountain. Glow orbs there. You would never get me out of these. Look at that. Just absolute luxury. There's some cool statues outside, too. I wonder if they used to be fountains. Of some sort, right? I want to see the pools. I just want to see the water. I see. I think maybe they're old fountains. look at the little I wonder if that's like to just wash your face or even drink out of because if we look over here it should be nearby the Trinkhalle is over here another very oop, oop, oop. come back the Trinkhalle thank you another very it's in 1839 to 1842 this was built one of the more famous ancient sites here. Ancient sites. Um, <laughs> historic sites is what I'm talking about. Where you'd come to drink the water. And the casino should be right down here. Yep. The 
this, you know, bottom, bottom, which is very, like, Monte Carlo coated, and it's like a palace inside, you know, it's super luxurious. All for the tourist, right? Let's turn that off, back to normal mode. What else do I have to show you? I guess I promised you more dinosaurs. See, there's there's just so many things I found in this state. You gotta let me know um, if I missed anything super interesting. This museum, is it this museum? I think it's this museum. There's another site here that I'm like, well, that's cool, but was it in the palace? I don't think it was the one in the palace. I think the palace museum's just the history. Here's the one that I'm looking for. Yeah, so that's what it was. The Schloss Karlsruhe Museum is nice. But this one's awesome. We got more dinosaurs. This guy looks like he's having a hard time sneezing. Look at this big armadillo. <laughs> Wait, what? Just a little, deer. no tail. I guess it's like elephants, you know? Look at this guy. That's too big. Little Spinosaurus guy. Was that what they were called? Whoa. <laughs> what were they called? With the big fan? I can't remember. Look at this guy. Some cool, cool dinosaurs lived here once upon a time. Triceratops. It looks like T-Rex, doesn't it? It's a jellyfish. <laughs> a friend that curled up and died in the sand. There, an eel. Chameleon. Oh. <laughs> Some big rams there. Some cave lions. I guess maybe the aquatic artist to be like, once upon a time, this was ocean where you're standing. Oh, and lots of little beetles. And cool rocks. Look at all that amethyst. It's very, very cool. Yeah, because once upon a time, this was all underwater, wasn't it? Oh, there was also the um, Stuttgart Zoo, which the slideshow there wasn't terribly impressive, but that was another, like, if you're going to be there, you got to go see that. Anything in Heidelberg I wanted to show you? I was poking around here the other day. I don't think there's the Heidelberg Zoo as well. It was a big one. Mannheim. Is there anything I wanted to show you in Mannheim? I guess we can look at the, the Kunsthalle. Modern art here. I've been skipping a lot of modern art um, on my channel because I want to show you history, but modern art's also really cool. It has its time and place. I appreciate modern art. Just what I'm trying to teach you about history, you know. Um, let's check out... Actually, you know what I'm going to show you last? I know what I'm going to show you last. Unless I remember something else. Let's see. In your high bag. Europa Park is Germany's largest theme park, and it's kind of a whole vibe. It's very, like, Disney, and I saw this and went, well, that's Epcot. And I'm pretty sure this was built first. I think Disney copied Europa Park. Um, but, like, like, this looks fun. I want to ride on this, the big splash. That's fun. Um, I like this, yeah. Let's see, now, I'm eight years old deep inside, so seeing a theme park like this is awesome. I want to come here so bad. It looks so fun. I was poking around, um, like the, the Grimm's fairy tale section. Hello, it's Editing Geographica here. My camera does this thing sometimes where if I'm filming for too long, it decides to not save the last three minutes. So I'm sorry this ended quite abruptly, but you're really not missing much. I just recorded a little outro after this. So I'll just re-record it now for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the style of content, please consider subscribing. Since I'm doing every region of the world in alphabetical order, I'll be going to Bavaria very soon. So if you want more German content, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. 
I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night.